Okay, appraisers, in this video we're going to be covering the grid settings in Spark. Now, there are two different types of settings in Spark. There's the grid settings, which are these, and there's the general settings, which you get to by going to this gear icon and clicking general settings. Uh, you can also right-click and go to general settings right there. So, as I said, on the left here, left of your grid, anything that's blue is something you can click on to customize the way that data is going into your grid. These are the grid settings. Now, I want to say that you should take the time to go in and customize these so the data is going into your report the way you want it to. A little bit of time up front is going to save you a whole bunch of time in every single report going forward. So once you get this how you want it to be in your grid, then you'll never have it's going to save you a ton of time going into your report later on and kind of customizing. Let's say you don't like FAU, you want it to be FWA. Instead of going into your report every time after you use Spark and, and changing these, you can just change it right now, right up front, and never have to do that again. So it's worth it to take some time right at the beginning when you first start using Spark to go in and customize these. So, okay, that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's, since we talked about FAU, let's go ahead and look at that setting. So if I want to change the way this looks in my grid, I just click Heating Cooling. Find forced air, and I change that. So I'm going to change that to FWA. I, li I like using forced warm air, FWA. Uh, also, I want to point out that anytime Spark has access to both public records and MLS data for a specific feature or property characteristic, you're going to have these top two drop downs. One, where you can decide whether you want to prefer MLS or public records as far as the data that's going into your report, or just leave it blank. And you can also choose to turn on or off the public record MLS comparison. So let's go ahead and turn that off. We'll say no. Hit save changes and take me back. Now you can see that on the heating and cooling line, what was FAU is now FWA. And this was red because there was a discrepancy between MLS and public records. I said turn that off, so now it's no longer showing up as red. And the reason you might want to turn that off, for example, if I click on above grade room count, I know I'm digressing here, but so bath information from CoreLogic um, or from public records I should say is inaccurate in my area so I have that turned off I don't want to see that flash red when they don't agree uh, because the MLS is nearly always going to be accurate and the public records is nearly always going to be wrong so I just have that turned off I have my preference here to MLS now for total room count I don't get a total room count in my MLS but I do in public records so right here I chose public records as my data source preference and then all you do is you hit save changes take me back when you're done and that's it okay so I also want to show you verification source because this one's a little bit different so you click verification source what we did in here is we tried to accommodate as many different options as we had appraisers requesting. Uh, but in order to do that and also make it fairly straightforward to use, what we did is we made an example line right here. So essentially, whenever you change one of these settings, this line is going to update and show you what it's going to look like in your grid. So that way you don't have to keep flipping and flopping between your grid and this setting to see what it's going to look like. So essentially, if you don't like the way this is showing up in your grid, you want to change that to, let's say, public records. You just type that in here. And when I leave the field, it updates this. So now you can see what it's going to look like in your grid. And you also have the option of not just having document number, but you can also choose, let's say you want to put in document number and parcel number. You click that. Now you can see that updates here. And if in your area you don't you don't commonly use APN, you use, let's say, parcel ID or PID. Then you just hit that, and that updates as well. And then when you're all done making the changes, you just hit Save Changes, Take Me Back, and that is what goes into your grid. Okay, now I also wanted to cover these bottom three. I call them the miscellaneous lines of your grid, but they're the three, in a regular Fannie Mae form, they're the three that are below porch, patio, deck. And let's just say, for example, you don't want fencing going into that line right there. So you just click fencing. And what you do is you have this drop down. And these are the all the possible options you have to choose from. And I do want to mention that these are MLS specific. So this list may look different for you based on what MLS you're in. Also, if you're using Spark Lite, this list will look different. Uh, and let's just say I want to put in pool features. So I click that. This updates. Now I change how I want to put these into my grid. So for no pool, uh, let's say I don't want to put no pool. I just want to put none. I just change that. And I hit save changes and take me back. And now you can see that has automatically updated with pool features over here and all this information going across. Looks like none of my comps have pools. Uh, also, just to let you know, 
on the left here where it says pool features, you can customize that as well. You just highlight that and change it to whatever you want. If you just want it to say swimming pool, whoops. Then you just type that in, hit save changes, take me back, and it says swimming pool now. Same applies to these other two. You just update them to whatever you want them to be. Uh, we have another video going over prior transfer history. You can watch that as well. And I also wanted to show you one other thing, and that is design style. Just to give you a, an example here. Actually, I'm going to show you the grid. So you can see it says uh, detached one-story ranch, detached one-story unknown or question mark. This a Spark, whenever Spark doesn't know what to put in, um, usually that's because the agent didn't enter any information in for the architectural style, for example. It will put in whatever your abbreviation is for unknown. By default, it's a question mark, but you can, with the general settings, you can change that to whatever you want, and we cover that in the general settings video. So you click design style. And you'll notice that down here at the bottom, you have a default style. Now, in your MLS, this actually may be up at the top, but for a lot of you, it's at the bottom. Um, and what that means is when it's unknown, the agent, for example, didn't enter any information in, then you can just type in what you want to put there as your style. So let's say I want to always default when it's unknown to neo-eclectic. I just type that in. I hit Save Changes, Take Me Back. And now it, you can see that it says neo-eclectic. Keep in mind, this does not change the information when it is known. It'll still put in whatever your MLS or public records has. But when it's unknown, it will put in whatever your default was. Similar things apply to garage carport. And I also want to point out that when I go in here, if I change detached from DT to, let's say I want detached and hit save changes and take me back, since I'm in a UAD report, that is not going to change this, uh, since this is defined by UAD. But if I was in a non-UAD report, then it would change it. By the way, if you want to quickly change from UAD to non-UAD, you can just click it right here where it says UAD, change it to non, and your entire grid will update. And you can see now it's putting in what I wanted for detached. Uh, okay, uh, that's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, and thanks for watching the video.